welcome to part 7 of HMS tutorial. Today we are going to introduce into our uh, simulation the rainfall based on daily rain intensity. This is a difficult parameter to find, but we will try to find a way to get an idea of the extreme data that can occur on your region. We can open again our file in HMS. We have uh, our area of interest, we have all the sub-basin, we have our source connected to the reach number one. At this point, we have to introduce a rain gauge. The likelihood that you have a real existing rail gauge on your area is not that high. And the likelihood that you have a rain gauge for each sub basin is almost impossible. That's why we have to find a way to find the rain intensity for your region. Of course, if you have time and if you have the connection, you can contact your meteorological institute of uh, the country and you might get the best data possible, historical data, and all what you need. But in reality, you don't have the time to ask for precise data. So what you can do is to browse the internet. Of course, each country might have its own meteorological page, which is fine. Maybe you can straight away download the data from the internet. If not, you need to browse the internet and find the best data possible. For example, for Switzerland, we have a page in German where you could find the historical extreme water uh, event. On this page I can find the historical uh, rain intensity, the sum of the day, and I can see in my region uh, we are going up to 420 mm. This is the highest rain intensity measured so far in this area. And I don't know if this is the 50 years rain uh, event or the 100 year rain event, but I don't really care. In my case, I'm going to work with 420 millimeter as a daily sum. You might have other pages. For example, this one can help the water spark. Here you can find the rain intensity in millimeter per day of each area maybe not everywhere but fine you might have to look uh, for a good data source uh, you might even put in the comments some uh, good sources uh, that might help uh, other users in the future and uh, myself as well but for our cases we are going to use 420 millimeter per day as an extreme event so let's go back to our HMS and let's start to insert the rain gauge. The first step that you need to do is to go to the components and insert the time series data. Here you need to click on new and you get the name of the time series data and you can give a description if you want. Of course, if you are working with several time series data, it is worth to give a good uh, description. You will see a new folder has been created here called time series data and with a gauge number one. If you click on the gauge number one, we get some parameters. First here you can write a description. Data source, we can enter the data manually, incremental millimeters. And here we can choose the time interval. I would like to have 10 minutes time interval. Here it is the location of your uh, rain gauge. For us it's not important in this case because we don't have a special place for the rain gauge. We have only one for all the bassin, so no need to fill it. The next one will be the period of uh, measurement time window. Since my rainfall was measured in October 2020, I just put a period in October of 2020. It is the 3rd of October 2020 and I will make the measurement every 10 minutes for one day. So I start at uh, midnight the same day and I will stop at midnight 24 hour. And here on the table I need to insert the millimeter. So what I know it is that I have only 420 millimeter 
per day, but I don't know exactly every 10 minutes how much rain it was falling. What I know is just that the sum is going to be 420. I will assume that this rain falls down over three or four hours. Therefore, I go to an Excel sheet, just write the, the time from zero every 10 minutes down to, to 24, and then I just start with zero, so it's not raining at all, zero, zero millimeter. And then here at uh, five o'clock, it starts to rain slowly, slowly, and it starts, it increases the rain, increases the rain, it gets a peak for 10 minutes at 8.30, and then it's going down again to zero, and then it stops to rain again. That's just an example. I can display this uh, rainfall, but of course this is my interpretation, it can be in the reality completely different, but no one really can know that since we don't have a rain gauge on the area. So this is now my rainfall during that day, and the sum of it is 420 millimeter. Now I can copy this column and I can insert this column here. And here you can see I have pasted the rain intensity. Again, I can display the rain intensity through a graph, which is very similar to my graph. Fine. Next step would be to insert the meteorologic model. We go to component, we click on meteorologic model manager on new the name automatically appears met one we can give a description if you want and okay again on the same way we will get a new folder here met one and here we have some parameter we are going to use metric system no short wave no long wave we are going to use this precipitation through a specified tidal graph there is no evapotranspiration, evapotranspiration, there is no snow melt. And important is to click here, if there are some missing value, just go to default. So the computer will continue to uh, simulate. Next would be here, to what do we link this meteorological model? We link it to our passane, which is called uh, Valcamadra. Yes. And the option, nothing special. And here we have to link our rain gauge to each sub -masane. and this has to be done manually. Of course, you could have a different rain gauge for each sub -masane. but and we are not going to do that. And I save. And next step, and the last step, we have to introduce under component control specification manager click on new control one and again on the same way we are going to have a new folder called control specification and here we can add the description we need to start on the same date so 03 october 2020 start time 0 zero and then end date is 03 October 2020 and end time 24 and again interval every 10 minutes fine that's it at this point we have created our rain gauge based on an hypothetical extreme rain intensity don't forget to save everything this is the end of the part number seven of the tutorial Next part, part number eight, we are going to run the analysis and to interpret the result.